Hi, this is Jim Stark with the Kitmaker Network, and we've got a turning the page for a book uh, by uh, Orga uh, Publishing International in um, Italy. Um, this book's in Italian and English. Um, it is volume six in their static manual, model manual series, step by steps. And this one's called M Materials and Methods Painting Models uh, by Alessandro Brucci. Um, this, I can, I'm actually pretty excited about this book um, after going through kind of one uh, look through it. Um, let's go ahead and crack it open or turn the page, as I sometimes say. Uh, it's brand new, by the way. Uh, it should be pretty much just out. Um, the, uh, this is the uh, table of contents for the book. I'll just go through them really quickly. Um, <laughs> kind of interesting. They... They put the Italian here and then the English, but then they flipped it and put started putting the English and the Italian. So I'm not sure that was a little, a little uh, text faux pas. But uh, this goes introduction, paints for modeling, the families of modeling paints, primer, thinners, paint application, mixing paints, brushes, using a brush on large surfaces, airbrush, compressor, controlling the airbrush, troubleshooting, disassembly and cleaning, special paints, decals, protecting the decals, washes, and dry brushing. Um, has an introduction here by Alessandro. Um, the, uh, the English translations, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple sections just so you guys can get a, 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 um, a feel for it. But I would say, uh, that the English, English translations on this are excellent. Um, I, you know, you can usually pick up if something's been poorly translated. Um, and this one obviously has been very well professionally translated by, um, an English native speaker. So, um, let's, um, go through this, obviously some, uh, paints uh, dealing with various the various different paints that they are going to be using with this. This is pretty much a broad spectrum of all the paints available right now or even in the past. Um, let me just read uh, here a section. Actually, there's an interesting little kind of breakdown on bottles. Um, let's, let's take a look at that. The most important component is the pigment, which the substance which is the substance that imparts color. These are usually mineral oxides or more rarely rarely organic oxides, often used for greens and browns, which are finely ground with special mills. The more, the more they are ground, the more the color of the powder changes tone. It is very complicated to achieve a color tone that is always consistent, and large quantities are often produced in order to ensure a certain degree of consistency. It is possible to buy the same paint several years later and note a small difference in the shade. Um, see, so then it goes through, uh, that was number one for the, the bottom, uh, actual, uh, pigment. And then it goes through the binder, the base, uh, the coalescent, the preservative, um, and then the solvent. So, um, I probably, I think I missed one there, didn't I? Oh, the retarder, uh, is number four. So it, really interesting that they cover all the layers in the painting manufacturing process, which obviously is something that's uh, good to know. And, and if you want to be able to talk about paints in a, uh, technical way it's a very interesting uh, addition to to the book um but i i read through a couple different sections here earlier and i'll again i'll kind of repeat um just so that people uh, can get a good grasp of the the uh, english uh, used in the book uh here's something talking about the compatibility of different brands of enamels uh, even though the chemical composition of paints in the same family can vary, it is often possible to mix paints from different brands. In some cases, there is total compatibility and less in other cases. It is advantageous to have a good idea of, as to what brands can be mixed as it avoids having to buy duplicate paints and also allows us greater flexibility. There are circumstances in which the paints of different brands, although labeled as enamels, are not very compatible and either become very thick when mixed or 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 do not mix together satisfactorily. We have conducted several compatibility tests and we suggest that the reader do the same, but not directly on the model with your best airbrush. So again, no issues there, no grammatical kind of faux pas. Uh, the issue on the front page obviously is one done probably by, uh, with, the, with the table of contents that was probably just something not caught at the, uh, at the copywriting uh, level. But here, here again, uh, the book goes into many different kinds of paints here. Um, some of which I'm sure you recognize, lots of compatibility charts, which is great. Um, there's just a lot of detail in this book. I can't imagine um, there are many books based specifically on painting and uh, color mixing and uh, brands that has uh, come out that would be uh, as detailed as this one. So uh, you can kind of see I'm just flipping through, obviously, but there's a massive amount of information here. 
and I can't really go into it in great detail, obviously, without giving the entire book away. But um, you can see, obviously, just, you know, so much time and, and um, energy has been spent in trying to make something that really, um, you know, gives intermediate to beginner um, modelers a real kind of um, solid fr uh, groundwork uh, for their future painting and uh, projects. And I can say quite honestly that uh, I'm going to be keeping this book because uh, I can't imagine a better book for myself, being that I'm a little bit of a, a newbie when it comes to uh, at least modern airbrushing techniques and so forth uh, and painting paint uh, knowledge, that it would be quite honestly stupid for me to uh, pass this book on to somebody else when I obviously do, do plan on trying to uh, improve my painting and techniques. Uh, so here's a section on the airbrushing, obviously. Um, so holding the airbrush, just a little, a little, another little bit here. Several things must be kept in mind when grasping the airbrush. The device should be held firmly and the grip should be steady and stable. Your wrist will determine the direction of the nozzle, not your fingers. The fingers that controls the trigger can either be your index finger or your thumb. So again, very specific and um, not leaving a lot of room for wrong interpretations and uh, so forth. So uh, some section on compressors, different types of compressors. Um, so just flipping through it again, kind of um, lots of information here. I, I, there must be thousands of pictures in this. Uh, small but uh, obviously useful information. Uh, this is the section on uh, cleaning. Um, Another, read another little small blurb, blurb here. The quickest way to clean an, or disassemble an airbrush is to immerse it in an appropriate low-cost cleaning medium, such as alcohol for acrylics or mineral spirits for enamels. Don't leave the instrument immersed for too long, as the rubber gaskets will suffer. If an aggressive cleaning is needed, nitro solvent works best, although it deteriorates the rubber. As soon as the piece has been cleaned of everything, it should be dried and then washed with soap and water to remove the cleaning me medium completely. So for those of you, obviously, um, who have been airbrushing for a long time, it's, you know, generic information or what you, what you might consider uh, already know. But for, for those people who are essentially, like I said, intermediate or beginners, this is a great book with uh, a lot of information in it. So... Um, singing its praises, I know, and I don't normally do that with a product, but I can I can tell quite honestly with this one that it uh, it is, you know, essentially what it uh, what it purports to be. Okay, so um, I'm not sure I covered this in this video, but the cost, at least on the back here, is about 20 euros. Um, the again, the book has just been released, so you may um, may have a little trouble finding it right now, um, but it, it should be out there, obviously. Uh, go to your local hobby store, tell them about it, tell them they should order it. Um, you know, that's sometimes the only way you're gonna get it at a local level, if you, especially if you wanna be able to see it and lay your hands on it um, yourself. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If, um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching.